Hi everyone, this is Hamed from the Remax Edit, and today I'm with, with my colleague Argawan. She's a mortgage agent. We are going to discuss some questions about real estate. Ah, uh, mortgage questions. So Argawan has some questions for me to start with. So, so what's your question? So Hamed, I'm going to start with a very common question. Why do people need to go to an expert real estate agent when buying or selling their properties? It's very important to choose uh, an expert real estate agent uh, when it comes to buying a house for your family because you have saved a lot of years probably or that's probably one of your life uh, biggest savings. So you want to make sure that you go to the right person when it comes to buying a property. Um, People need to approach us for several reasons. Number one, we have the negotiation power. Uh, we have dealt with so many uh, transactions in the past. We know how to negotiate and we know also uh, how to find uh, a deal that basically people can find value in it. What do I mean by that? Today we are in the buyer's market and uh, there are a lot of houses that are still overpriced and uh, if let's say you as a buyer decide to go and directly talk to the seller to find yourself a deal, you might not be able to negotiate the deal that you want. But because we know sometimes uh, the motive, uh, the motive behind the sellers, or let's say they want to sell to buy in another area, th there are different tactics that we can use based on our experience to negotiate a good discount for a buyer. Once you put yourself, let's say if you want to versus if, let's say if you want to go directly and, and deal with a seller directly, uh, you're going to put yourself in a front line where you have no way back when you are communicating with that seller versus when you have someone in the middle to negotiate for you, uh, you can always have the buffer or the time to think and reply and not get yourself locked up in a deal. Uh, we have seen uh, so many of our clients in the past they thought they getting themselves a good deal dealing with a seller directly. But after we check the data and the information in the area, we found that it's actually it's a market price or they sometimes even overpay. So we do our due diligence. We find out what's sold in the market, what's sold in the off market, where a lot of agents don't have access to that data. Uh, as an expert, we dig more into details to find what's been sold on the MLS and off the MLS. Exactly. And that's that's the benefit that comes with when choosing an expert to negotiate a right deal for you. Yeah, absolutely. Because you always have more information about the property's details rather than just one individual going um, themselves, putting themselves up front. Yeah, exactly. So I do have the same questions from you. Why do people need to go through uh, a mortgage broker or a mortgage agent when it comes to uh, finding a financing uh, for their dream home. So a lot of people go uh, to banks individually and potentially get declined. But my job here is that I work with dozens of lenders, including banks like alternatives and private side as well, that my hands are open to find the best mortgage based on each person's application and get that approved. So I save a lot of clients time, energy and efforts uh, by doing my job at no cost and providing ongoing support for them. Okay, awesome. And uh, so you work with different uh, with different lenders as an agent. Exactly. So I work with dozens of them, including banks, alternative sites, even private sites. Even a lot of people sometimes think that it's bad to go with alternative and private lenders, but um, actually it's sometimes more beneficial and it's less hassle and it's faster, especially for self-employed individuals. Uh, I know this, this question wasn't in our plan, but what do you think about the upcoming uh, mortgage hike? Do we, do we gonna see another mortgage hike in the market or um, uh, it's gonna stay the same? It's a very, um, I would say, concerted, concert answer that I would say but um, we think that we are gonna see another hike in September like this month but then after that we are less likely to see any based on the data that we have um, but most probably we're gonna have another one but after that it's gonna be more stable let's say so you think that after another uh, mortgage rate increase uh, we're gonna see the inflation is being like the curve is being uh, more flat and uh, 
in, in my opinion, I think that after the next more uh, the, the next interest hike, uh, we're gonna see a little bit of a drop, and then after that, then that's it. That would be the bottom line, and then the prices we're gonna see an increase in the prices from let's say. Uh, I don't know, November, December, January, same as uh, previous years. What do you think? What we have uh, like discussions based on uh, like our teams and everything, what we see and um, what the Banks of Canada has been doing is that they are trying to reduce inflation by raising hikes, right? Yes. So what we see is that, um, and you may notice property prices are down, like yes. even by 20%. Yeah. And we are going to still see that, but... Um, they are trying to control that inflation, let's say. Um, we see the control, like inflation, but technically, end of the, the, yeah, uh, technically they are uh, increasing the interest rate to bring the prices down. When the prices are down, they are more likely matching the people's income to be able for the people to afford those houses. So what does it mean that once we reach to the point where the prices are at the lowest, and it, it's, it's more matching with the people's income and affordability, then that's where we see the entry, the entry point of the people to the market, which means the market starts to see the demand again. Yeah, exactly. So um, I see that in my suggestion, I would say it's going to start picking a lot starting like 2023 so we are going to see that a bit of a slow uh down um people are frustrated about uh, the rates and everything by the end of the year like 2022 but then starting 2023 um it's gonna pick again exactly it's gonna pick up again yeah, yeah. especially that's with the, the demand. Plan. yeah because they can't just keep going up and up and uh, yeah. that's that's the cycle so what is your next question? So I'm going to have this question for you. What differentiates you between you and other PAC, other real estate agents? What do you have in your specialties? Okay. So what, what really makes me different or makes us different than the other uh, uh, friends, colleagues uh, in this business is uh, when it comes to buying a property or selling a property, uh, we do a lot of due diligence on the property. Um, we dig into the properties that sold on the market and we also we we dig in the properties that are sold privately uh, through geo warehouse or other systems uh, sometimes even uh, you know we see properties are sold but it's gonna take 20 days until it appears on the system so we talk to the neighbors we talk to the people we have information that which properties sold when and for how much so before putting an offer let's say if i want to act on behalf of a buyer uh what do we do is we do a very deep due diligence uh second to make sure the deal is a great there is a great value in the deal for the client and uh we stay very focused on the client demand we listen to the clients very well if they come up and tell us we need a property in a single or in a specific area, we we will not cross those boundaries. We try as much as possible to keep it within that boundary. I know sometimes it gets really difficult, and uh, we might come up with an option to give them an, an a block in the north or a block in the southeast or west. But we try to stay as focused on the client need uh, and demand uh, very precisely. Uh, and we do a lot of work. We do door knocking, we do cold calling, uh, we go through our network. So it's a lot of work that we do that uh, uh, differentiate us. And uh, the last thing that I would like really to emphasize on is that if I see that is, if there is something wrong with any property, I will try to bring up the negative part of or negative side of that property first to the client attention before having them to come actually see the property and then show them the hydro line, for example, or the fire station. So uh, we, we tell the client everything up front. That's, uh, that's how the way we conduct our business. So there would be no surprises and no pop-ups uh, when, when the client is working with us. We want to make it as hassle-free as possible for the clients when they trust us to spend the time and come and meet us. 
and hire us to find them the property that they want. Yeah, um, something that uh, we really value with both uh, is that we really put our clients first, their needs, their values and everything. And we work uh, in the best interest for them. And we don't put ourselves first. We are not here to just earn that commission and like sell it's, clients. It's, this business is about uh, putting people's interests and it's about people. It's about building relationship. This business is not a, a transaction business. This no. business is is about building relationship, true relationship with people based on honesty and trust. That's the most important things we need in this business. Exactly. Like uh, we are here to build uh, ongoing, growing wealth for them uh, exactly. for long term. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the points that like we discuss in the office. We are not here to act as a real estate agent. We are here to act as a wealth manager or wealth builder for the clients, because if you find them a good property that they can sell it a few years or a year after with a couple hundred thousand dollars in profit, uh, they want to buy two property. Mm -hmm. They want to expand their portfolio. So we have to pay attention to our job, what we're going to do next. It's not about the current time. It's about the, how long you want to stay and sustain in this business. Yeah, exactly. I have one more question for you. Sure. Uh, based on our experience, I, I know that we get this a lot by our clients, but what are some uh, common mistakes before closing or um, on closing that people make uh, and it kind of make that transaction fall apart? Yeah. So, you know, right now we are in the buyer's market. Sometimes you, like, you buy a property that um, you're going to find a difficulty uh, to match the appraisal with the price you paid. For example, you paid a $2 million for a property, but the appraisal price comes at 1.9. Mm -hmm. So the bank will require you to put that $100,000 difference. On your My property. advice is do not empty your bank. Uh, leave everything after your closing. And uh, that's, that's the one thing that you should pay attention. Uh, do not underestimate the closing cost. Calculate it right. So you would know exactly how much you would need uh, for your mortgage broker, for your closing lawyer, for your land transfer tax. Uh, so please pay attention that you always have an extra money in the bank for that closing. And uh, um, the, other, the other things before the closing is not checking on the property. Uh, usually we do a last check on the day of the closing in the morning or, or a day before that. Mm -hmm to make sure that the property we bought for our client is the same condition when we have put the offer a month prior to that and nothing has been changed. Uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, we make sure that uh, the property uh, doesn't come with any uh, an additional cost, uh, mm -hmm. not only checking the property, let's say, um, you know, you might close on the property and next day you, you, you find out that the furnace is not working. Uh, so maybe during that inspection, the, the, the furnace was working or let's say if you see something suspicious, you have to bring it to the, buyer, to the seller's attention to avoid, uh, to avoid having any extra expenses after the closing of that property. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, Hamid, for answering thank you all for your these time. questions. Yeah, and I hope everyone enjoyed our information. And yeah, so please follow us for more if you uh, want more information. And thank you, Hamid, again for having us. And see you soon. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this uh, conversation. I hope this conversation will bring you uh, more information that you needed toward your next purchase. For more information, do not forget to follow and share this video, uh, this video with the friends that you think uh, it can it can it can be to their benefit as well. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.